Ooh, just gonna adjust this. Hello, everybody. My name is Christian Wolf. I'm the current student body president here at North Dakota State University, but I also had the privilege of being an intern at the Grand Farm this summer as their events intern. I got to help them plot small events, um, such as the innovation series and small get-togethers with companies, to their big conferences like Autonomous Nation and Cultivate. Coming from the great city of Bismarck and studying political science and strategic communications, I know that agriculture and technology were two words that were not in my vocabulary before this year. However, this summer has enlightened me. I have learned that North Dakota has been a leader for promoting egg tech industries across the region, and Fargo has become one of the beacons for its momentum. And furthermore, Grand Farm is pushing this endeavor further. It has become a place where innovation and collaboration are coming together to advance egg tech. So I have learned that the Grand Farm is energizing the egg tech ecosystem by promoting conversations and connections between technologists and growers. It has been such a privilege to be able to see these bridges being built right in front of me. I am also thrilled to learn how North Dakota students can get involved in this endeavor, and that brings us to now. I'd like to welcome John Hoven. John Hoven currently serves as North Dakota's 22nd US Senator following 10 years of service as the state's governor. Senator Hoven serves as the lead Republican on the Senate Agriculture Appropriations Committee and is a senior member of the Senate Agricultural Committee where he works to ensure the nation's farmers, ranchers, and rural communities have access to the tools they need to succeed. His recent efforts include securing disaster assistance to help farmers and ranchers recover from last year's historic drought. Furthermore, his negotiations began on the next farm bill. Hoven is working to maintain a strong farm safety net, improve the risk management tools available to farmers and ranchers, and enhance agriculture research programs. Senator Hoven and his wife, Mikey, reside in Bismarck. They have two children and seven grandsons. I'd like you guys to all give a warm welcome for Senator Hoven. Thanks, Christian. NDSU President Christian Wall, thank you very much. Thanks for being here. He is also an intern at Grand Farm. How good is that? Start right. Yeah, only the best for Grand Farm. Yeah, you can cheer for him. Go ahead and clap a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, you're, yeah. Well, a little of that enthusiasm out as we get rocking and rolling here. So this is going to be fun. You're going to hear a little bit from me, but then there's some interesting speakers coming up too. So you're in luck. Uh, stay tuned. I do want to do a few intros right off the bat. Uh, before I introduce some of the folks that will be speaking, we have some marvelous, wonderful North Dakota legislators here. And I would like to introduce them, not only because they do a, a great job, but because, as with so many of the programs that I try to work on, we create great partnerships. And we would love for the state of North Dakota and our legislators to find a way to partnership with us in Grand Farm as well. So I want to encourage all these great legislators who are here today, if they're inspired, and I know they will be, by Grand Farm, to think about what y'all can do in the upcoming session to uh, join in this wonderful partnership. This is going to be something is already fantastic, but it's going to be really great. So uh, starting with Senator Judy Lee, Senator Shannon Roars Jones, uh, Representative Scott Meyer, Representative Kim Koppelman. Uh, Representative Greg Steeman, uh, Representative Dave Monson, Representative Austin Schauer, uh, Cindy Schreiber-Beck, Michael Howe, Jared Hagert, Mike LaFour, Brandy Pyle, and Mike Peltz. Show them a lot of love. Come on, a lot of love, a lot of love. More, more. Uh, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Um, guys, think about, um, as we, and I know you're familiar with Grand Farm, you legislators. Thanks for coming today, by the way. Thanks for coming. Thanks for serving. That's not an easy job. Thanks for being uh, willing to serve the citizens of North Dakota. And you do a great job. You do a great job. Our state's in super strong shape, and it, it's a testament to your good work. But really, think about how the state of North Dakota can partner in this great endeavor. Because what we're going to talk about today, what we're going to announce today is another great partnership for this enterprise. Uh, and we'll talk about a little bit about that. You're also going to hear from uh, se uh, State Senator uh, Ron Sorvog, who's here. Uh, also uh, from Marlon Eve, who's the Deputy Director of USDA ARS. 
Ag Research Service uh, at, located on the campus of, uh, it's actually the Ed Schaefer ARS uh, facility at the uh, NDSU campus. And of course, the leader of NDSU, the big bison himself. Do you all call him the big bison now or is that not <laughs> stuck yet? <laughs> Dr. David Cook, the big bison, yeah. Uh, Mark Watney, who's a board member of Grand Farm, uh, will be talking about uh, some things today. He's also the president of North Dakota Farmers Union and uh, entrepreneur extraordinaire, Barry Batchcheller, who along with networker extraordinary, extraordinaire, Greg Taveen, hatched this idea. I think over uh, 10 or 12 beers one night, they were visiting <laughs> and became inspired. And as Taveen does, you know, started uh, getting Barry to talk about, gee, what kind of things based on your entrepreneurial history related to ag could we do that would be exciting to advance and promote agriculture in a very meaningful way. They got onto precision ag and uh, Grand Farm was hatched. So Taveen, you look kind of farmerish today. You got your flannel shirt. Uh, earlier you had your hat. So you are on the list officially now, even though you're not officially, weren't officially on the list, you are now. So if you want to think about what you're going to say, Start thinking about it. So I was trying to come up with some ways to bring key players together that could help us advance precision agriculture. You know, how do we do that? And a number of the programs that we worked on rise was one somehow uh, various elements got added to it that didn't just focus solely on entrepreneurship. They got some uh, income factors and some different other aspects of the program that took away from simply focusing on how do we drive precision ag forward in new and innovative and creative ways. And so the idea was that I worked to secure some funding to bring key players together. So where we could get cooperative agreements, cooperative agreements to bring key players together to advance agriculture, to advance agriculture, that's what I was after. So in this case, you've got just that. You've got Grand Farm, You've got North Dakota State University and you've got the Ag Re USDA Ag Research Service coming together in a cooperative agreement and we're providing a million dollars for them to come together in a cooperative way to advance Grand Farm, the concept being how do we drive precision ag forward. So that's what we're announcing today is a million dollars for that cooperative agreement to do just that. <laughs> right on cue. Gotta love you, Tavine, right on cue, perfect. <laughs> uh, and it demonstrates the partnership, right? I mean, Microsoft has already been a huge champion diving in on this, obviously, NDSU, uh, Dr. Cook, uh, our ARS uh, facility, incredible, and then Barry and, and the whole entrepreneurial crew, um, you know, when you think about the articulated tractor and Steiger and all the work he's done way back when, and then all of his work in technology and then so many others, the incredible talent pool here at NDSU, you can see uh, that really nobody else is positioned better than North Dakota to drive precision agriculture forward, right? And so when you think about it, we're the number one ag state in the country. We've got the number one university in uh, ag research. And I really think right now, this area, this, you know, this Fargo expanded Metro Valley, all the way up to Grand Forks, which I'll touch on in a minute, we have the most entrepreneurial climate anywhere in the country too. So you bring those things together and great things can happen. Great things can happen. And so when you look at it in the kind of the immediate impact right now, right? It is about precision agriculture. And think about what our farmers and ranchers are doing right now. They have to feed the world. And it really is, as Watney will tell you, food, fuel, and fiber, right, Mark? Um, and think of some of the innovative programs that you've developed over there. Again, we're, we're pushing the seams out here in North Dakota in agriculture in a lot of new and exciting ways. So when we talk about pre precision ag right now, it's look at the, look at the price of inputs. Look at the price of anhydrous and fertilizers and all these, all these things. So if we can come up with ways through technology to drive the cost of inputs down, that helps our farmers and ranchers produce, right? If we can come up with ways for them to be more productive, same thing. All these things help their ability, their bottom line, their ability to continue to produce and grow their operation and what? Feed the world. Feed the world. And with this disruption we see right now in Ukraine, you realize how important it is that America feeds the world and that North Dakota drives this country forward 
in agriculture. Okay, so that's the here and now. That's the here and now. Really advancing precision agriculture on the ground, having an impact for our farmers who are out there in the field right now, probably harvesting some small grains. This is not pie in the sky. Someday we're going to do something that might help a farmer. This is helping them right now, okay? But we got to dream a little, right? Because this is, remember, Grand Farm came out of the inspiration of Greg and uh, Barry and other people who, you know, they're like Gretzky. I mean, you know, they always chase the future, you know, where the puck's going to be in the future, not the here and now. So that's the here and now, the practical reality of why this matters. But for just a minute, let me just kind of lob something out that we talked about last week and had a lot of fun doing it. And I might just read off this so you get a little sense. Sometimes examples better than, you know, a thousand words or whatever they say. Um, think about the Grand Sky Technology Park. We are the leader in all things on manned aviation, now reaching out into space and beyond. That is a simple 17-year overnight success. We started that in <laughs> 2005. You can talk to a lot of people, now they're involved, and they'll tell you how they got it all done. But we actually started that back in 2005. And we didn't become the world leader in all things unmanned aviation in a year or two years, right? I mean, we've been at that for 17 years. But to say we have momentum now is, un, is an understatement. Here's the corporate partners just involved in our announcement last week in terms of Sky Range and the, and the uh, Range Hawk program. These are, these are the aerospace companies involved. Now, there's seven governmental partners, for starters, seven governmental partners, Missile Defense Agency, DOD Undersecretary for Research and Engineering, U.S. Air Force, DARPA, U.S. Navy, U.S. Army, NASA. So those are the seven governmental partners. Here's the 16 corporate partners in that venture. Northrop Grumman, General Atomics, Blue Halo, Strata Launch, Raven Defense, Honeywell, CDSI, Lados, John Hopkins, I3, Georgia Tech, KBR, Torch, Raytheon, Perkin, and Controlled Dynamics. Well, that reads like a hoo-hoo of the aerospace companies, uh, really, and certainly in this country, probably in the world, okay? We started this venture about two years ago. Sonny Purdue was out, and we broke ground uh, on the initial uh, plot for Grand Farm. That was, that was just a couple years ago. What's this thing going to look like in 17 years? I don't know. I hope something like we did, got going up in Grand Forks. And I think that's absolutely realistic. And even in terms of right now, we should be linking in with things that are happening up at Grand Sky because y you've all been watching Artemis, I think, with great interest, how we're going to, in essence, go to the moon. We're going to set it up so we can have people survive on the moon so we can then go from the moon to Mars, right? I've been to Cape Canaveral. I've been to the uh, SpaceX hangar. In that hangar, they have 10 Falcon 9 rockets. Every single those, one of those rockets has been to space and back 10 times. That's 100 missions just with the rockets in that hangar. And it's not like they drop down in the ocean and they're done. They take off from Cape Canaveral, they do their mission, they turn around, and they come back, and they land, okay? We have space travel, but what's our ability to sustain people, life, out in space, whether they're on that rocket, or on the moon, or if they go to Mars? Who's going to figure that out? How about us? Who's better positioned to do it than us? So when you're talking people like, Greg and Barry and many others, they dare to dream big, and they make those dreams happen. And that's what we're after. Okay, I went on a little long, but I sometimes get enthusiastic about this stuff. So let me introduce uh, our next uh, speaker, somebody who does a great job in the uh, North Dakota State Senate, Ron Sorbach. Ron, where are you? I met Representative Michael Howe. Well, thank you, Senator Hoven. Uh, I am Michael Howe. I'm not Ron Sorbog, so I know this large crowd assembled to see Ron today, but uh, he's a little under the weather, so I've uh, been asked to fill in. I want to speak about Senator Hoven for a little bit. It, it's a big deal having Senator Hoven here. Uh, he's been in the U.S. Senate for 12 years now. We've got a farm bill coming up next year. Uh, he's the head minority leader on ag appropriations. Uh, to have 
a guy like Senator Hoven backing a project like this, supporting all of us in agriculture, uh, I, I think we just need to give him a round of applause because he does an excellent job. <clears throat> I want to introduce Marlon Eve from USDA ARS. Dr. Marlon Eve grew up on a dry land grain and livestock farm in north central Montana. He received his BS in soil resources from Montana State University and a master's and PhD, PhD from New Mexico State University using geospatial technologies and modeling to study landscape dynamics and ecosystem health. Marlon currently serves as a deputy administrator over the Natural Resources and Sustainable Agriculture Systems program area at the USDA Agriculture Research Service. NRSAS provides strategic leadership of ARS research programs in water resources, soil and air quality, sustainability of our crop and livestock production systems, and the soil plant atmosphere interface. Marlin also provides leadership to support data integration, automation, and collaboration across ARS and our research partners, including working to lead and guide the Partnerships for Data Innovations initiative. Marlin, please come to the stage. Thank you, and uh, thank you, and, and uh, it's great to be here with so many esteemed colleagues and uh, with Senator Hoven and, and uh, all of our folks from the state legislature. Uh, it's an honor, and, and I'm humbled to be here with you. Uh, I did grow up just a, a bit west of here on the prairies of Montana, where we grew small grains and, uh, and fed cattle and hogs. And uh, so the landscape here is, is somewhat familiar to me. And uh, definitely that farm mentality and that farm, that rural farm atmosphere is, uh, is very familiar to me. And so uh, I'm thrilled to be here. I'm not going to speak long. Uh, I just wanted to mention that I'm with the uh, Agricultural Research Service. Uh, ARS has, uh, I believe, three research locations here in North Dakota. Uh, we have Fargo, we have efforts in Grand Forks, and then uh, we have the the unit in Mandan that is in the Natural Resources and Sustainable Systems program area that I lead. ARS has 90 research units across the U.S. and uh, we, we do research uh, with many of our land-grant partners that covers all of agriculture and food and human nutrition. And so if, if you're having a struggle or a challenge in anything related to to uh, the food and agriculture space, it's likely that we have a scientist somewhere that's working on it. So um, I, I just wanted to mention here today that I am, I am thrilled about this new partnership. Uh, ARS has been, has been uh, thinking about big data, artificial intelligence, how to integrate and layer data sets together, how to make them interoperable, and then how to serve that data up so that our producers, our farmers and ranchers out across the landscape have instant access to data-driven decision-making. And that really is at the heart of what Precision Ag is. And so um, I am thrilled about the opportunity for our ARS researchers in Mandan and elsewhere to partner with Grand Farm and with our collaborators from North Dakota State on this new initiative, and I'm really excited to see where it goes. So um, I just want to say thank you to uh, all of those who made this event possible, and uh, thank you to uh, Senator Hoven and his colleagues in the, in the Senate for, for entrusting us with this opportunity. Thank you, Marlon. And, and Senator Holman's talked about partnerships, Marlin's talked about partnerships. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention uh, the partnerships within the North Dakota legislature. Uh, during our last special legislative session, we were able to appropriate $10 million for Grand Farm. Uh, and this wasn't an uh, Eastern North Dakota thing. This wasn't a Cass County thing. This was a statewide uh, uh, partnership. We had legislators, of course, here from out west, Republican, Democrat, House, Senate, uh, having that partnership, and now we've got a partnership here with the USDA and the federal government and working with NDSU, uh, it's just, it's a really exciting time to be, to be a part of this. Uh, 
Our next speaker is NDSU President David Cook. David Cook was named the 15th president of North Dakota State University in February 2022. Prior to joining NDSU, he was vice chancellor for the Office of Public Affairs and Economic Development at the University of Kansas. President Cook's economic development role focused on entrepreneurship, collaborating with industry, commercialization, providing student experiential learning opportunities and aligning educational offerings with the region's workforce needs. He was an American Council on Education Fellow at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Cook earned his bachelor's degree at Iowa State University and his master's and doctoral degrees from the University of Kansas. He and his wife, Katie, have three children, Gage, Ella, and Peyton. President Cook, please come to the stage. Thank you, Michael, I appreciate it. So I, I am here to say welcome and, and thank you to everybody. So I'm looking out across the room. I am starting to get to meet people, which has been wonderful. A big goal of mine has been just to get out across the state, interact with people and really ask the question, what does the state's land grant mean to you? Uh, what can we do better? What can the new president do better? And, and this has involved, you know, really breakfast, lunches and dinners all day, every day, all, day, all weekends and all the rest. And now I'm getting a little self-conscious after the senator called me the big bison. I'm wondering if maybe I've done a little too much. We, we need to work on that nickname, but that's for another day. But, uh, uh, you, you know, the thank you start with Senator Hoven, of course. So uh, I've been really fortunate to, to, to run into him in a lot of different ways in the short time that I've been on board. Uh, I feel incredibly fortunate to kind of walk into this role and have somebody like him who we know supports agriculture, technology, the future of the state, higher education, NDSU, and all the rest. Uh, an incredible advocate, uh, an incredible leader for us. So sincerely, and, and hearing you talk about what this is all about it was incredibly inspiring to me. So thank you for all of your uh, support, and I'd like to give you a round of applause if you don't mind. <laughs> And of course, the other kudos and thank yous and exciting things are, are the support from, from the USDA. So very appreciative uh, there in terms of the financial support, but the way in which you're helping to bring us together, helping us think about where we need to be going. Uh, and closely tied to that, of course, is uh, the relationship and partnership uh, with Grand Farm. And again, I've only been on board for a short time, but I swear every time I turn around, there's some kind of Grand Farm initiative, innovation, helping us all think about where we're going and the partnerships. And uh, I'm excited to see where we go. And I'm thrilled that we're all working together on this. So sincerely, thank you to the USDA and thank you to Grand Farm as well. So let me give them another hand. So this is exciting to me and I think everybody in the room because it's creating this grand opportunity for us to truly become a, an ag and tech hub uh, in Fargo, in Fargo-Moorhead, in Cass County, in the region, in the state. And uh, I can't help but think that this is just the beginning and we have a bright future ahead, which again is incredibly exciting. It's exciting for me as the new president when I see our student body president walk up here and, and talk about what this means to him. Uh, we have amazing former student body presidents, all of whom I think I'm gonna be working for someday when this gig runs out. Uh, and he had, to, Christian had to run off to class, which I loved, I was proud of him for doing that. Uh, but he was an intern, as was mentioned at Grand Farm. This kind of partnership initiative uh, is gonna do that for more and more of our students. So when students are coming and thinking about where they wanna to go to college or maybe where they wanna to go to graduate school, these kind of opportunities are amazing for them, for internships, to get involved with innovation and research and all the rest. So I, I'm excited to think about what the possibilities are there for them. And then the same candidly is true for our faculty. Um, I'm a big believer that the future of higher education is about working with business and industry where we're all gonna be going together as we kind of reinvent and transform uh, the future of this thing. And when I see these kind of opportunities out there, I see the opportunity for our faculty to connect with industry, maybe to do some research, build further relationships. Again, I just, I can't help but think, you know, the future is bright. This is a great foundation for us to do great things, and I'm just incredibly appreciative for all the partnerships and all the rest, and I can't wait to, to, to meet all of you as well, but just thank you again for being here. Welcome, and um, I usually say go Bison. It's on our campus, so go Bison. There you go.
thank you, President Cook. Uh, he's been just excellent. He's been all over the state in his first few months here. They took a two-week tour. Uh, I know they've been meeting with legislators all across the state, so thank you, President Cook, for your, for your efforts, and I know the legislature is looking forward to working with you uh, in January. Our next speaker is Mark Watney. Mark Watney serves on the Board of Directors for Grand Farm and as the President of North Dakota Farmers Union. In 2018, he was appointed to USDA's Grain Inspection Advisory Committee for the Federal Grain Inspection Service. Watney farms and resides in Jamestown with his wife, Michelle. They have three grown children and three grandchildren. Mark, please come to the stage. Well, good morning, and I, I really feel honored to be up here. I, serving my role at North Dakota Farmers Union has gotten me the ability to be a board member on the Grand Farm. And I, I think it's, a, it's just a tremendous opportunity for uh, a farmer uh, by nature and uh, the ability to serve in a, a high-tech world that has a great abundance of technology that will be coming forward that's going to aid in farmers and ranchers' lifestyle going forward. So I think that's amazing. First of all, I want to thank uh, Senator Hoven and uh, USDA, ARS, NDSU. Um, it's just a great opportunity that this uh, startup value-added project that's going to be uh, something that uh, we haven't seen across this nation, and we're going to see things that we can't imagine are possible. It's just a huge thank you for them partnering with the Grand Farm. And it's so appropriate that we're here on the campus because NDSU really was one of the early partners of getting this project off the ground, so thank you to the NDSU. Uh, especially Senator Hoven, I think, uh, I, I'm trying to think of a week that goes by that whether it be the Grand Farm or the farm organization, that we aren't, don't reach out to you or your staff and uh, we, get ex we get the responses we need. Um, we get the answers to what we're trying to fix. We get just a, a great dialogue going to try to enhance and take on those challenges that farmers face and of course these opportunities that will come with the Grand Farm. So this is an important time and uh, it, it's one of these things where we, we don't put two and two together that often and I took an economics class here at NDSU and I wanna say 20, 30 years ago, but it's more like 40 years ago now. And uh, I don't know if Bill Wilson's in the room, so I'll pick on him if he is, he can catch me afterwards. But I remember back in the day, uh, taking from many professors economics class, but Bill Wilson sticks out to be Dr. Wilson. Uh, and uh, sometimes in the back of your mind, you kind of question how economics works and you may or may not always agree. Uh, but at the end of the day, I was actually reading a textbook here this last month. It's the 19th edition of uh, Macro Microeconomics, and, and there's, there's like two chapters on technology in there, and it talks about productivity. And uh, you know, you can, again, get in the world of demand and supply curves and all that, but the fact of the matter is, product, production and productibility is led by technology. And for us to, meet the needs of a growing world for us to fill in these gaps that the senator talked about is going to be essential that we figure out how we can enhance technology. Now, from a farmer perspective, you're going to find that farmers are on all sides of technology. Um, they're just like us with cell phones. You know, we want to have the greatest and the best. And uh, somehow, Apple's convinced us to trade phones every two years, even though it doesn't do much more than it did before. But the fact of the matter is that we love technology, but we have the suspicion, we have the suspicion that the costs sometimes won't outweigh the benefit. So this is where that Grand Farm, this is where ARS, this is where NDSU is gonna play a major role. Uh, we're gonna be able to take a lot of this technology from genetics to autonomous equipment, and we're gonna be able to test it and play it, and we're gonna be able to bring the farmers and ranchers to the farm, and we're gonna be able to show them all the things that have potential. And then every one of these farms that has a unique situation can figure out which one fits their operation and what's gonna make them to be substantially more productive. And uh, along with that, hopefully they'll find the next step within economics is efficiency. And uh, hopefully we can make the best decisions, make the most efficient decisions, and we can continue to produce the highest quality, best food in the world. And the consumer gets the benefit of that. And keep in mind, at the end of the day, farm bills, technology, Agricultural production is benefiting the consumers in this nation, and that's a good thing. So thank you. Thank you, Senator Hoban. Thank you, USDA. Thank you, ARS. And everybody involved, this is going to be a great partnership. Look forward to working on it going forward.
Our next speaker is Barry Batchelor. Uh, of course, Senator Hoven referred to Greg and Barry as coming up the Grand Farm idea after 10 beers. I don't know if that's entirely true, but we'll let Barry uh, address how many beers it was. But Barry Batchelor is a serial entrepreneur whose professional career has spanned more than 45 years. He founded six successful technology companies, including two that currently operate in NDSU's research and technology park. Following the purchase of Phoenix International Corporation in 1999, he served for six years as John Deere's Director of Technology Growth. Bachelor is an, elect an electrical and electronics engineer graduate of NDSU and is a pioneer in the use of electronics and agriculture equipment. He was awarded numerous US and foreign patents in this area. Barry, please come to the stage. Well, well I'm, I'm the only guy standing between you guys and a graceful exit, so I'll, I'll, I'll wrap this up pretty quickly. But I, I think it's really important for all of us to understand the impact of agriculture that this state has and that this city has uh, on the world. Uh, we all see what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, everybody's concerned about the ability of Ukraine to ship wheat. Um, this country has become a, a trusted food source uh, throughout the world. Uh, in 1776, 2% of the United States was not involved in agriculture. 98% uh, of the people in the United States at the founding of this country were involved in agriculture. Today, 2% of the United States population is involved in agriculture, and 98% is not. So there's been a complete flip around. And that 2% of the United States population feeds this country and many parts of the world. And, but food security is not a given. I mean, food security is something that has to be worked on every day. And the ability to produce food and fiber is re it requires a high uh, input of innovation, from genetics to mechanics to electronics. Uh, autonomy is currently uh, a big thing in, in, in agriculture and in the world. Many of you folks in, in the audience today, you will live and work alongside of sentient, intelligent mobile equipment. It will be in the workplace, it will be in the grocery stores, it will be in the hospitals. You, you will live and work alongside intelligent equipment. The farm is no different. The farm will have intelligent mobile equipment on the farm, but it'll have a lot of other technologies that have to do with health and education and other things where farms are getting larger and, and more remote in this country. It takes three things to make an initiative like this operate. One is inspired leadership. Uh, Senator Hoven may be, uh, and forgive me all of you other North Dakota citizens, but he may be the most impactful citizen in North Dakota in the past two generations. What he has done for this state with the Grand Sky and now the Grand Farm and other initiatives that, that really help this state it's a, it's a phenomenal thing, and he, he's a treasure to the state, um, and, and we, we hope he's here for, for, for many years to come. Uh, Dr. Cook, our new president, uh, has tremendous potential to lead this university and the state in areas of innovation and agriculture. Dr. Lardy, of course, working uh, side by side with Dr. Cook, has tremendous input there, and of course, Greg Tadine uh, on, on the Grand Farm. So this, this inspired leadership is something that is very, very precious and very unique to the state of North Dakota, uh, something we can count on, and something that is highly contributed to the, to the success of the state. The second part that's necessary is structured support and structured execution. The Grand Forum provides that structured execution of the technologies, and it forms this bridge between the private industry and the public industry. And, and that, that is a bridge that is tenuous at many times, but being able to bridge the private-public gap at North Dakota State University and the Grand Farm that brings the innovation together, each part adds something that the other really cannot do. And, and that type of collaboration just brings all kinds of new innovation. The third part that's important is, is community support. The, the, the ability for a community of, of people who live and breathe agriculture, and it absolutely resonates with the state of North Dakota. Agriculture is in the DNA, it's in the blood of North Dakota. And this entrepreneurial activity that Senator Hoven talked about earlier, it's also woven tightly into the fabric of the state. Uh, one of the first companies I started, Phoenix International, started with Humble, as a matter of fact, <laughs> one of the products we did was electric underwear. And 
a crazy story, but uh, at that time, if you had a check, you had our interest. We were brand new, and we needed the money, and uh, a person came in, and he wanted uh, electric underwear for hunting. And so we kind of got overboard on it, and we made computer-controlled long johns. <laughs> and, and it was great stuff. I mean, we made 1,200 pair. We sold 12. Um, <laughs> But, but it was fantastic. When you walked, you know, the electricity, the heat would build up in your body, and, you know, the batteries would shut down, and they'd conserve battery. And when you stood in the wind, you know, if it was coming from the left, the left side of your underwear would heat up, and the right side, it was great stuff. You wanted to stay out of the rain? For, for, for some reason. At any rate, one of the first people to buy this was Ron Bergen. Ron has been a, an entrepreneur in, in, this, in this community and in the nation. And Ron didn't buy the underwear, I'm sure, because he wanted to wear them. He bought them because he supported this new company that was starting up, and he wanted to be participative in the growth. As a matter of fact, I had, I had lunch with him a while back, and he, he gave me back my underwear. So, <laughs> so is Ron, I think I saw him, pardon me, Ron, for the story, but, but it's, it's illustrative of the type of support the, the community gives to the, to the growth of new endeavors and new businesses. And that type of support we see all over the place here with the Grand Farm. People reaching out to support, to contribute, to be part of the growth uh, of this new enterprise. So I'm just thrilled with what Greg Thavine and his team, I'm thrilled with the inspired leadership, I'm, I'm thrilled with the execution of the Grand Farm, and I'm thrilled with the community statewide and national support for this endeavor. So thank you very much, Greg. Thank you, Senator Hoven, for everything that you've done. Senator Hoven. Th thanks, Barry. And as always, um, so gracious, but just the information and, and the history he has in terms of entrepreneurship and, and the kind of things you're doing now at Apario, um, it, um, beyond belief. Uh, but I, I love that stat that you quoted. So when... Our founding fathers founded this country in 1776. 98% of the people were involved in farming, 2% not. Now that's flipped. 2% of the people in this marvelous country are involved in farming, the rest aren't, which shows you the incredible productivity because those 2% not only feed the country, they feed so much of the world. But that dovetails with something that I talk about all the time in Washington, D.C., and pretty much anywhere else uh, that I am, and that is that, um, th that every American benefits every single day from the highest quality, lowest cost food supply in the history of the world, brought to you, not by your grocery store, they're a conduit, by the farmers and ranchers of America. And so when we work on farm policy, and, and absolutely I'm senior on ag now, so I'll be part of writing that farm bill, but um, you know that doesn't just benefit our farmers and ranchers, that benefits every single American every single day. Americans spend less of their discretionary income on food and they get better choice, better quality, and more of it than any country in the world. Think about it. We spend less of our income on food and get far more from our farmers and ranchers. And that is a story that we have to tell in the urban areas because people don't have that nexus to farming like so many of us do. So thanks, Barry. I've got another great stat I can use now, and I will. And thanks for your leadership on this great endeavor. Come on, Tavin. So we got to drag Greg up here to close things out. Uh, as part of doing that, I'm going to mention two things. One is my staff. They work so hard on all these things. Uh, State Director Jessica Lee, Jess. Uh, in Grand Forks, we have Tom Brustegard, a no-kidding real-life farmer for most of his life. He's probably out getting coffee. I don't know. But you all know Tom up in Grand Forks. And then I've got some of my DC crew here today. I don't have Tony Everhart, my chief, who actually did ag policy for Norm Coleman when I hired him when I came to the Senate. So he's from Missouri. He's got a great uh, ag uh, knowledge and, so, and background. Uh, and then Aaron Weber, who's actually from Wishick, and I used to live down in Ashley. He's from Wishick, North Dakota. Uh, Aaron Weber, who does ag policy for us and is absolutely awesome. And John Altendorfer, uh, where is John here too? So we have a big ag crew because ag is always number one for us. We do a ton in energy, but the ag space is number one in terms of what we do. I happen to be on the campus of another great university yesterday, not as great as NDSU, uh, but a pretty good one, UCLA in California. And we're on campus there, and here's this little robot guy. He looked like R2-D2 in Star Wars. He was just kind of a can. 
and he's rolling down the street, you know, just on campus, on the Bruins campus, the UCLA Bruins. And so we go, okay, we got to go check this out. So we go over, and he's just tooling away down there. And it says right on the side, I deliver food to Bruins. And it's, you can see it's shaped like a tank, so you can see how you open the top and put food in there. And it's got a little antenna, and then off he goes all over campus and who knows where else, delivering food to, you know, students. And it says right on there, I deliver, student, I, I deliver food to students. Here's the phone number. You know, here's the, uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, address, you know, the email address, uh, text or email, and I'll deliver you food. And, you, you know, you can shoot on a little icon if you want to order the whole nine yards. So there it is, uh, Big Bison. Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> now, we don't call you, you're very svelte. I mean, ripped. But uh, <laughs> we call you the Big Bison because you are the leader of the herd, of course. But just a thought for you, maybe, uh, you know, a robot to deliver food to, to Bison. Again, think about it technology, you know, coming in here and how we can, we can do these things, no doubt about it. So, but uh, to, to close, a guy who, along with Barry, was really the inspiration for Grand Farm and so many other things, Greg Tivian. Greg. Uh, well, thank you, Senator Hoven. Uh, my parents are here today, and I grew up on a family farm with a generation of farmers. And... I didn't help much on the farm. I played more Sim Farm in the basement and ate ice cream with grandma. But I'm grateful for the values. I'm grateful for the values of a small town, of collaboration, of folks that are helping out. When somebody is sick, the neighbors show up. I think that's what Grand Farm means to me. It's an ability to bring producers together, like our grower advisory board, to solve problems. To engage industry, both large, established, multinational companies that we all know and fight over which color they are to the emerging startups that are trying to solve problems using their strength of being nimble and agile and moving quickly. I think about the opportunity to engage with educators, students, um, higher ed places like North Dakota State University that after Kevin and Stacy Bifford gifted us land for the Grand Farm, and yes, you said, we'll do a project. And Dr. Lardy started to allocate resources of collaboration for students and industry on farm. I think about the ability to work with policymakers, folks like Mike from Dickinson, Scott from Grand Forks, folks like Judy Lee that have been in the service for a long time, and folks like Greg that are just getting started. As we think about policy that creates opportunity, um, I think about um, our ability to stand on the shoulders of giants. There's entrepreneurs in the room, like Gary and Ron, Ryan and Chris, Keith, that have added a tremendous amount of value for their customers, generated wealth, and are now in the time of generosity and sharing. Barry, Brian, and I had breakfast this morning, and we talked about what a privilege it is to solve problems like this. We've traveled around the world and met folks that they can think in two-minute increments, 20-minute increments, and yet we as a region have an opportunity to play offense, to share our resources, to solve problems that both generate opportunities locally, globally, and at some point in outer space with food production. And I think back to my childhood of watching small groups of people come around the dinner table to do things that mattered, to help our neighbors, to help our community, and to make it a better world for all. I'm so excited for the ability to partner with North Dakota State University, the United States Department of Agriculture, and a community that cares. We need your help. Some things to look forward to is um, some of you will have the opportunities to work with Central Cast students that'll start new technologies at the farm. We'll have the opportunity to do internships with Grand Farm. We're building a campus and we're well on our way to building a world-class innovation facility and the opportunity to collaborate with industry to solve problems for real people that makes a real difference. So I'm grateful for those values. I'm grateful for this opportunity. I'm grateful for Senator Hoven for um, letting the budget committee know they'll be funding us. <laughs> and I'm grateful for the opportunity to work really hard with all of you to make the world a better place. Agriculture is a key part of that. Technology will reduce problems, increase efficiency, increase a safer environment, and help us make a difference. And that improves the human condition. Thanks for being here. Hope you continue to communicate, collaborate, and help us solve this problem. Thanks and have a great morning.